The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis Translated by the Reverend William Benham The Third Book on Inward Consolation Chapters 1 to 10 Chapter 1 Of the Inward Voice of Christ to the Faithful Soul I will hearken what the Lord God shall say within me. Psalm 85, verse 8 Blessed is the soul which heareth the Lord speaking within it, and receiveth the word of consolation from his mouth. Blessed are the ears which receive the echoes of the soft whisper of God, and turn not aside to the whisperings of this world. Blessed truly are the ears which listen not to the voice that soundeth without, but to that which teaches truth inwardly. Blessed are the eyes which are closed to things without, but are fixed upon things within. Blessed are they who search inward things, and study to prepare themselves more and more by daily exercises for the receiving of heavenly mysteries. Blessed are they who long to have leisure for God, and free themselves from every hindrance of the world. Think on these things, O my soul, and shut the doors of thy carnal desires, so mayest thou hear what the Lord God will say within thee. These things, saith my beloved, I am thy salvation, I am thy peace and thy life. Keep thee unto me, and thou shalt find peace. Put away thee all transitory things, seek those things that are eternal. For what are all temporal things but deceits? And what shall all created things help thee, if thou be forsaken by the Creator? Therefore put all things else away, and give thyself to the Creator, to be well pleasing and faithful to him, that thou mayest be able to attain true blessedness. Chapter 2 What the truth saith inwardly without noise of words. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth, 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 9 I am thy servant, O give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Incline my heart unto the words of thy mouth. Psalm 119 verse 125 Let thy speech distill as the dew, the children of Israel spake in old times to Moses, Speak thou unto us, and we will hear, but let not the Lord speak unto us, lest we die. Exodus 20, verse 19 Not thus, O Lord, not thus do I pray, but rather with Samuel the prophet I beseech thee humbly and earnestly, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Let not Moses speak to me, nor any prophet, but rather speak thou, O Lord, who didst inspire and illuminate all the prophets. For thou alone without them canst perfectly fill me with knowledge, whilst they without thee shall profit nothing. They can indeed utter words, but they give not the Spirit. They speak with exceeding beauty, but when thou art silent, they kindle not the heart. They give us scriptures, but thou makest known the sense thereof. They bring us mysteries, but thou revealest the things which are signified. They utter commandments, but thou helpest to the fulfilling of them. They show the way, but thou givest strength for the journey. They act only outwardly, but thou dost instruct and enlighten the heart. They water, 
but thou givest the increase. They cry with words, but thou givest understanding to the hearer. Therefore let not Moses speak to me, but thou, O Lord my God, eternal truth, lest I die and bring forth no fruit, being outwardly admonished, but not enkindled within, lest the word heard, but not followed, known, but not loved, believed, but not obeyed, rise up against me in the judgment. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Thou hast the words of eternal life. John 6, verse 68 Speak unto me for some consolation unto my soul, for the amendment of my whole life, and for the praise and glory and eternal honour of thy name. Chapter 3 how all the words of God are to be heard with humility, and how many consider them not. My son, hear my words, for my words are most sweet, surpassing all the knowledge of the philosophers and wise men of this world. My words are spirit, and they are life. John 6, verse 63 and are not to be weighed by man's understanding. They are not to be drawn forth for vain appreciation, but to be heard in silence, and to be received with all humility and with deep love. And I said, Blessed is the man whom thou teachest, O Lord, and instructest him in thy law, that thou mayest give him rest in time of adversity. Psalm 94, verse 13, and that he be not desolate in the earth. I, saith the Lord, taught the prophets from the beginning, and even now cease I not to speak unto all. But many are deaf, and hardened against my voice. Many love to listen to the world rather than to God, they follow after the desires of the flesh more readily than after the good pleasure of God. The world promiseth things that are temporal and small, and it is served with great eagerness. I promise things that are great and eternal, and the hearts of mortals are slow to stir. Who serveth and obeyeth me in all things, with such carefulness as he serveth the world and its rulers. Be thou ashamed, O Sidon, saith the sea. Isaiah 23, verse 4 And if thou reason seekest, hear thou me. For a little reward men make a long journey, for eternal life many will scarce lift a foot once from the ground. Mean reward is sought after. For a single piece of money sometimes there is shameful striving. For a thing which is vain, and for a trifling promise, men shrink not from toiling day and night. But, O oh shame, for an unchangeable good, for an inestimable reward, for the highest honour, and for a glory that fadeth not away, it is irksome to them to toil even a little. Be thou ashamed, therefore, slothful and discontented servant, for they are found readier unto perdition than thou unto life. They rejoice more heartily in vanity than thou in the truth. Sometimes, indeed, they are disappointed of their hope, but my promise faileth no man nor sendeth away empty him who trusteth in me. What I have promised I will give, what I have said I will fulfil, if only a man remain faithful in my love unto the end. Therefore am I the rewarder of all good men, and a strong approver of all who are godly. Write my words in thy heart, and consider them diligently, for they shall be very needful to thee in time of temptation. 
What thou understandest not when thou readest, thou shalt know in the time of thy visitation. I am wont to visit mine elect in twofold manner, even by temptation and by comfort, and I teach them two lessons day by day, the one in chiding their faults, the other in exhorting them to grow in grace. He who hath my words and rejecteth them hath one who shall judge him at the last day. A Prayer for the Spirit of Devotion O Lord my God, Thou art all my good, and who am I that I should dare to speak unto Thee? I am the very poorest of Thy servants, an abject worm, much poorer and more despicable than I know or dare to say. Nevertheless remember, O Lord, that I am nothing, I have nothing, and can do nothing. Thou only art good, just, and holy. Thou canst do all things, art over all things, fillest all things, leaving empty only the sinner. Call to mind thy tender mercies, and fill my heart with thy grace. Thou who wilt not, that thy work should return to thee void. How can I bear this miserable life unless thy mercy and grace strengthen me? Turn not away thy face from me, delay not thy visitation. Withdraw not thou thy comfort from me, lest my soul gasp after thee as a thirsty land. Lord, teach me to do thy will, Teach me to walk humbly and uprightly before thee, for thou art my wisdom, who knowest me in truth, and knewest me before the world was made, and before I was born into the world. Chapter 4 How we must walk in truth and humility before God. My son, walk before me in truth and in the simplicity of thy heart seek me continually. He who walketh before me in the truth shall be safe from evil assaults, and the truth shall deliver him from the wiles and slanders of the wicked. If the truth shall make thee free, thou shalt be free indeed, and shalt not care for the vain words of men. Lord, it is true as thou sayest. Let it, I pray thee, be so with me. Let thy truth teach me. Let it keep me and preserve me safe unto the end. Let it free me from all evil and inordinate affection, and I will walk before thee in great freedom of heart. I will teach thee, saith the truth, the things which are right and pleasing before me. Think upon thy sins with great displeasure and sorrow, and never think thyself anything because of thy good works. Verily thou art a sinner, liable to many passions, yea, tied and bound with them. Of thyself thou always tendest unto nothing, thou wilt quickly fall, quickly be conquered, quickly disturbed, quickly undone. Thou hast naught whereof to glory, but many reasons why thou shouldest reckon thyself vile, for thou art far weaker than thou art able to comprehend. Let therefore nothing which thou doest seem to thee great. Let nothing be grand, nothing of value or beauty, nothing worthy of honour, nothing lofty, nothing praiseworthy or desirable, save what is eternal. Let the eternal truth please thee above all things. Let thine own great vileness displease thee continually. Fear, denounce, flee nothing so much as thine own faults and sins, which ought to be more displeasing to thee than any loss whatsoever of goods. 
There are some who walk not sincerely before me, but being led by curiosity and pride, they desire to know my secret things and to understand the deep things of God, whilst they neglect themselves and their salvation. These often fall into great temptations and sins because of their pride and curiosity, for I am against them. Fear thou the judgments of God, fear greatly the wrath of the Almighty. Shrink from debating upon the works of the Most High, but search narrowly thine own iniquities into what great sins thou hast fallen, and how many good things thou hast neglected. There are some who carry their devotion only in books, some in pictures, some in outward signs and figures. Some have me in their mouths, but little in their hearts. Others there are, who, being enlightened in their understanding, and purged in their affections, continually long after eternal things, hear of earthly things with unwillingness, obey the necessities of nature with sorrow. And these understand what the Spirit of Truth speaketh in them, for he teacheth them to despise earthly things, and to love heavenly, to neglect the world, and to desire heaven all the day and night. Chapter 5 Of the Wonderful Power of the Divine Love I bless thee, O Heavenly Father, Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, for that thou hast vouchsafed to think of me, poor that I am. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3, I give thanks unto thee, who refreshest me sometimes with thine own comfort, when I am unworthy of any comfort. I bless and glorify thee continually, with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost, the Paraclete, for ever and ever. O Lord God, holy lover of my soul, when thou shalt come into my heart, all my inward parts shall rejoice. Thou art my glory and the joy of my heart, thou art my hope and my refuge in the day of my trouble. But because I am still weak in love and imperfect in virtue, I need to be strengthened and comforted by thee. Therefore visit thou me often, and instruct me with thy holy ways of discipline. Deliver me from evil passions, and cleanse my heart from all inordinate affections, that, being healed and altogether cleansed within, I may be made ready to love, strong to suffer, steadfast to endure. Love is a great thing, a good above all others, which alone maketh every heavy burden light, and equaliseth every inequality. For it beareth the burden, and maketh it no burden. It maketh every bitter thing to be sweet and of good taste. The surpassing love of Jesus impelleth to great works, and exciteth to the continual desiring of greater perfection. Love willeth to be raised up, and not to be held down by any mean thing. Love willeth to be free and aloof from all worldly affection lest its inward power of vision be hindered, lest it be entangled by any worldly prosperity, or overcome by adversity. Nothing is sweeter than love, nothing stronger, nothing loftier, nothing broader, nothing pleasanter, nothing fuller or better in heaven nor on earth. For love was born of God, and cannot rest, save in God, above all created things. He who loveth, flieth, runneth, and is glad, he is free, and not hindered. 
He giveth all things for all things, and hath all things in all things, because he resteth in one who is high above all, from whom every good floweth and proceedeth. He looketh not for gifts, but turneth himself to the giver above all good things. Love oftentimes knoweth no measure, but breaketh out above all measure. Love feeleth no burden, reckoneth no labours, striveth after more than it is able to do, pleadeth not impossibility, because it judged all things which are lawful for it to be possible. It is strong therefore for all things, and it fulfilleth many things, and is successful, where he who loveth not faileth and lieth down. Love is watchful, and whilst sleeping still keepeth watch. Though fatigued it is not weary, though pressed it is not forced, though alarmed it is not terrified, but like the living flame and the burning torch, it breaketh forth on high, and securely triumpheth. If a man loveth, he knoweth what this voice crieth. For the ardent affection of the soul is a great clamour in the ears of God, and it saith, My God, my beloved, thou art all mine, and I am all thine. Enlarge thou me in love, that I may learn to taste with the innermost mouth of my heart how sweet it is to love, to be dissolved, and to swim in love. Let me be holden by love, mounting above myself through exceeding fervour and admiration. Let me sing the song of love, let me follow thee, my beloved, on high, let my soul exhaust itself in thy praise, exulting with love. Let me love thee more than myself, not loving myself except for thy sake, and all men in thee who truly love thee, as the law of love commandeth, which shineth forth from thee. Love is swift, sincere, pious, pleasant, gentle, strong, patient, faithful, prudent, long-suffering, manly, and never seeking her own. For wheresoever a man seeketh his own, there he falleth from love. Love is circumspect, humble and upright, not weak, not fickle, not intent on vain things, sober, chaste, steadfast, quiet, and guarded in all the senses. Love is subject and obedient to all that are in authority, vile and lowly in its own sight, devout and grateful towards God, faithful and always trusting in Him, even when God hideth His face. For without sorrow we cannot live in love, he who is not ready to suffer all things, and to conform to the will of the Beloved, is not worthy to be called a lover of God. It behoveth him who loveth to embrace willingly all hard and bitter things for the Beloved's sake, and not to be drawn away from him because of any contrary accidents. Chapter 6 Of the Proving of the True Lover My son, thou art not yet strong and prudent in thy love. Wherefore, O my Lord? Because for a little opposition thou fallest away from thy undertakings, and too eagerly seekest after consolation. The strong lover standeth fast in temptations, and believeth not the evil persuasions of the enemy. As in prosperity I please him, 
so in adversity I do not displease. The prudent lover considereth not the gift of the lover, so much as the love of the giver. He looketh for the affection more than the value, and setteth all gifts lower than the beloved. The noble lover resteth not in the gift, but in me above every gift. All is not lost, though thou sometimes think of me, or of my saints, less than thou shouldest desire. That good and sweet affection, which thou sometimes perceivest, is the effect of present grace, and some foretaste of the heavenly country. But hereon thou must not too much depend, for it goeth and cometh but to strive against the evil motions of the mind which come to us, and to resist the suggestions of the devil, is a token of virtue and great merit. Therefore let not strange fancies disturb thee whencesoever they arise. Bravely observe thy purpose and thy upright intentions towards God, it is not an illusion when thou art sometimes suddenly carried away into rapture, and then suddenly art brought back to the wanted vanities of thy heart, for thou dost rather unwillingly undergo them than cause them. And so long as they displease thee, and thou strivest against them, it is a merit and no loss. Know thou that thine old enemy altogether striveth to hinder thy pursuit after good, and to deter thee from every goodly exercise, to wit, the contemplation of the saints, the pious remembrance of my passion, the profitable recollection of sin, the keeping of thy own heart, and the steadfast purpose to grow in virtue. He suggesteth to thee many evil thoughts, that he may work in thee weariness and terror, and so draw thee away from prayer and holy reading. Humble confession displeaseth him, and if he were able, he would make thee to cease from communion. Believe him not, nor heed him, though many a time he hath laid for thee the snares of deceit. Account it to be from him when he suggesteth evil and unclean thoughts. Say unto him, Depart, unclean spirit, put on shame, miserable one. Horribly unclean art thou who bringest such things to mine ears. Depart from me, detestable deceiver, thou shalt have no part in me but Jesus shall be with me as a strong warrior, and thou shalt stand confounded. Rather would I die and bear all suffering than consent unto thee. Hold thy peace and be dumb, I will not hear thee more, though thou plottest more snares against me. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? Though a host of men should rise up against me, yet shall not my heart be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my Redeemer. Psalms 27 verses 1 to 3 and 19 verse 14 Strive thou like a good soldier, and if sometimes thou fail through weakness, put on thy strength more bravely than before trusting in my more abundant grace, and take thou much heed of vain confidence and pride. Because of it many are led into error, and sometimes fall into blindness well nigh irredeemable. Let this ruin of the proud, who foolishly lift themselves up, be to thee for a warning and a continual exhortation to humility. Chapter 7 Of Hiding Our Grace Under the Guard of Humility My son, it is better and safer for thee 
to hide the grace of devotion, and not to lift thyself up on high, nor to speak much thereof, nor to value it greatly, but rather to despise thyself, and to fear as though this grace were given to one unworthy thereof. Nor must thou depend too much upon this feeling, for it can very quickly be turned into its opposite. Think, when thou art in a state of grace, how miserable and poor thou art wont to be without grace. Nor is there advance in spiritual life in this alone, that thou hast the grace of consolation, but that thou humbly and unselfishly and patiently takest the withdrawal thereof, so that thou cease not from the exercise of prayer, nor suffer thy other common duties to be in any wise neglected. Rather do thy task more readily, as though thou hadst gained more strength and knowledge, and do not altogether neglect thyself because of the dearth and anxiety of spirit which thou feelest. For there are many who, when things have not gone prosperous with them, become forthwith impatient or slothful, for the way of a man is not in himself. Jeremiah 10, verse 23 But it is God's to give and to console when he will, and as much as he will, and whom he will, as it shall please him, and no further. Some who were presumptuous because of the grace and devotion within them have destroyed themselves because they would do more than they were able, not considering the measure of their own littleness, but rather following the impulse of the heart than the judgment of the reason. And because they presumed beyond what was well-pleasing unto God, therefore they quickly lost grace. They became poor and were left vile, who had built for themselves their nest in heaven, so that being humbled and stricken with poverty, they might learn not to fly with their own wings, but to put their trust under my feathers. They who are as yet new and unskilled in the way of the Lord, unless they rule themselves after the counsel of the wise, may easily be deceived and led away. But if they wish to follow their own fancies rather than trust the experience of others, the result will be very dangerous to them if they still refuse to be drawn away from their own notion. Those who are wise in their own conceits seldom patiently endure to be ruled by others. It is better to have a small portion of wisdom with humility and a slender understanding than great treasures of science with vain self-esteem. It is better for thee to have less than much of what may make thee proud. He doeth not very discreetly who giveth up himself entirely to joy, forgetting his former helplessness and the chaste fear of the Lord, which feareth to lose the grace offered. Nor is he very wise, after a manly sort, who in time of adversity, or any trouble whatsoever, beareth himself too despairingly, and feeleth concerning me less trustfully than he ought. He who in time of peace willeth to be over-secure shall be often found in time of war over-dispirited and full of fears. If thou knowest always how to continue humble and moderate in thyself, and to guide and rule thine own spirit well, thou wouldest not so quickly fall into danger and mischief. It is good counsel that when fervour of spirit is kindled, thou shouldest meditate how it will be with thee when the light is taken away. Which when it doth happen, remember that still the light may return again, which I have taken away for a time for a warning to thee.
and also for mine own glory. Such a trial is often more useful than if thou hadst always things prosperous, according to thine own will. For merits are not to be reckoned by this, that a man hath many visions or consolations, or that he is skilled in the scriptures, or that he is placed in a high situation, but that he is grounded upon true humility, and filled with divine charity, that he always purely and uprightly seeketh the honour of God, that he setteth not by himself, but unfeignedly despiseth himself, and even rejoiceth to be despised and humbled by others more than to be honoured. Chapter 8 of a low estimation of self in the sight of God. I will speak unto my Lord, who am but dust and ashes. If I count myself more, behold thou standest against me, and my iniquities bear true testimony, and I cannot gainsay it. But if I abase myself and bring myself to naught, and shrink from all self-esteem, and grind myself to dust, which I am, thy grace will be favourable unto me, and thy light will be near unto my heart. And all self-esteem, how little soever it be, shall be swallowed up in the depths of my nothingness, and shall perish for ever. There thou showest to me thyself what I am, what I was, and whither I have come. So foolish was I, and ignorant. Psalm 73, verse 22 If I am left to myself, behold, I am nothing, I am all weakness. But if suddenly thou look upon me, immediately I am made strong, and filled with new joy and it is great marvel that I am so suddenly lifted up and so graciously embraced by thee, since I am always being carried to the deep by my own weight. This is the doing of thy love which freely goeth before me and succoreth me in so many necessities, which guardeth me also in great dangers and snatcheth me, as I may truly say, from innumerable evils. For verily, by loving myself amiss, I lost myself, and by seeking and sincerely loving thee alone, I found both myself and thee, and through love I have brought myself to yet deeper nothingness. Because thou, O most sweet Lord, dealest with me beyond all merit, and above all which I dare ask or think. Blessed be thou, O my God, because though I be unworthy of all thy benefits, thou bountiful and infinite goodness never ceaseth to do good, even to ingrates and to those who are turned far from thee. Turn thou us unto thyself, that we may be grateful, humble, and godly, for thou art our salvation, our courage, and our strength. Chapter 9 That all things are to be referred to God as the final end. My son, I must be thy supreme and final end, if thou desirest to be truly happy. Out of such purpose thy affection shall be purified, which too often is sinfully bent upon itself and upon created things. For if thou seekest thyself in any matter, straightway thou wilt fail within thyself and grow barren. Therefore refer everything to me first of all, for it is I who gave thee all. So look upon each blessing as flowing from the supreme good, 
and thus all things are to be attributed to me as their source. From me the humble and great, the poor and the rich, draw water as from a living fountain, and those who serve me with a free and faithful spirit shall receive grace from grace. But he who will glory apart from me, or will be delighted with any good which lieth in himself, shall not be established in true joy, nor shall be enlarged in heart, but shall be greatly hindered and thrown into tribulation. Therefore thou must not ascribe any good to thyself, nor look upon virtue as belonging to any man, but ascribe it all unto God, without whom man hath nothing. I gave all, I will receive all again, and with great strictness require I the giving of thanks. This is the truth, and by it the vanity of boasting is put to flight. And if heavenly grace and true charity shall enter into thee, there shall be no envy, nor straightening of the heart, nor shall any self-love take possession of thee. For divine charity conquereth all things, and enlargeth all the powers of the soul. If thou art truly wise, thou wilt rejoice in me alone, thou wilt hope in me alone. For there is none good but one, that is God. Luke 18, verse 19 Who is to be praised above all things, and in all things to receive blessing. Chapter 10 That it is sweet to despise the world, and to serve God. Now will I speak again, O my Lord, and hold not my peace. I will say in the ears of my God, my Lord and my King, who is exalted above all, O oh, how plentiful is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Psalm 31, verse 21 But what art thou to those who love thee? What to those who serve thee with their whole heart? Truly unspeakable is the sweetness of the contemplation of thee, which thou bestowest upon those who love thee. In this most of all thou hast showed me the sweetness of thy charity, that when I was not, thou madest me, and when I wandered far from thee, thou broughtest me back that I might serve thee, and commandest me to love thee. O fountain of perpetual love, what shall I say concerning thee? How shall I be unmindful of thee, who didst vouchsafe to remember me, even after I pined away and perished? Thou hast had mercy beyond all hope upon thy servant, and hast showed thy grace and friendship beyond all deserving. What reward shall I render thee for this grace? For it is not given unto all to renounce this world and its affairs, and to take up a religious life. For is it a great thing that I should serve thee, whom every creature ought to serve? It ought not to seem a great thing to me to serve thee, but rather this appeareth to me a great and wonderful thing, that thou vouchsafest to receive as thy servant one so poor and unworthy, and to join him unto thy chosen servants. Behold, all things which I have are thine, and with them I serve thee, and yet verily it is thou who servest me rather than I thee. Behold the heaven and the earth which thou hast created for the service of men. They are at thy bidding, and perform daily whatsoever thou dost command. Yea, 
and this is little, for thou hast even ordained the angels for the service of man. But it surpasseth even all these things that thou thyself didst vouchsafe to minister unto man, and didst promise that thou wouldst give thyself unto him. What shall I render unto thee for all these thy manifold mercies? O oh, that I were able to serve thee all the days of my life! O oh, that even for one day I were enabled to do thee service worthy of thyself! For verily thou art worthy of all service, all honour and praise without end. Verily thou art my God, and I am thy poor servant, who am bound to serve thee with all my strength, nor ought I ever to grow weary of thy praise. This is my wish, this is my exceeding great desire, and whatsoever is lacking to me, vouchsafe thou to supply. It is great honour, great glory to serve thee, and to despise all for thy sake. For they shall have great grace, who of their own will shall submit themselves to thy most holy service. They who for thy love have cast away every carnal delight, shall find the sweetest consolation of the Holy Ghost. They who enter the narrow way of life, for thy name's sake, and have put away all worldly cares, shall attain great liberty of spirit. O grateful and delightsome service of God, whereby man is made truly free and holy, O sacred condition of the religious servant, which maketh man equal to the angels, well pleasing unto God, terrible to evil spirits, and acceptable to all faithful ones, O service to be embraced and ever desired, in which the highest good is promised, and joy is gained, which shall remain for evermore. End of chapter 10